Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until uh, midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. How you doing? I, uh, yeah, how you doing? Good. I, uh, I've got some good trivia for you. Oh, do you? Uh, we're going to yeah. do that, are we? Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm ready, although I took one of my nice pills last night, and it affects, <laughs> it affects my memory, but let's give it a try. Okay, these are, I was looking at uh, TV uh, audiences, and these, these are the four largest audiences for an American TV show, uh, aside from a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And uh, two of them, this is for one show, and two of them were the finales of a sitcom, one was a made-for-TV movie, and one was a TV drama. Oh, boy. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to say um, what the TV series wasn't Seinfeld, was it? Was not Seinfeld. No. He had a he had a big finale, but his was not uh, not even close to the uh, 106 million viewers. I'm trying actually to think. more it, more than some Super Bowls. It would it would have to be early on when there were like only three or four networks. Okay. It was, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it was the early 80s. Early 80s. Wow. And it was a, it was a series. It, n- not Cheers. No, not that. That was, that's number four. That uh, had 93 million. Uh, that was 93. It had uh, 77 million viewers. No way. How many did, did, uh, did Seinfeld have? It was below that. Oh, really? Below Cheers? Yeah. Wow. Oh wow! I'm just, a, a mash, mash number one. Yes, 106 okay. million viewers. Now you see, because it was earlier on, and there were less networks. You know, there that were was less 83. So it was, cable was around, but it wasn't huge, and no internet, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but that's and they and the population of the country was that's a huge audience. Uh, you, how many was that? Hundred and six million. Wow. Wow. Okay, now what's the next category? It's one was a made for T V movie. Came at the match was eighty three. This came out this also was eighty three. Well I remember I, saying I, I'd say something like Roots, but Roots wasn't a was this kind of a mini series. It wasn't a, Yeah, and that was seventy seven. So. It wasn't a movie. What movie would It was a made for T V movie. I know. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. I, my mind is a blank about made for T V movies. You're asking me questions about things I didn't pay a lot of attention to. <laughs> okay. Um, um because I never watched those uh, made-for-TV movies because they always seemed cheap to me. But uh, and they mostly were. Can you give me a hint? Uh, William Devane was in it. Uh, not a uh, not a happy movie. William Devane. I'm trying to remember. Wasn't that it was about a murder? Wasn't it? No. No. Wow. Oh, I don't know. Tell me. It was called the day after. It was the nuclear. Oh, that disaster. thing! I think. See, I never. I thought that was a piece of shit. You know, know. why? But why did they watch that? How many people watched that? That had like seventy-three million. Really? Yeah, I think. Uh, I think everyone was. Uh, I remember everybody was freaking out. We we're going to die in a nuclear holocaust at the time, and yeah, I guess they picked up on that. The uh, last one was uh, an hour-long. Uh, it wasn't a finale. Uh, it was a dramatic uh, series that, uh, but it had a, a special episode in it. It had a. Got this. What do you mean? It went. It went away from the normal part. It had uh, something happen. Someone got. Well, you're uh, talking about. You probably it's uh, Dallas who shot Jr. 
That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You're a genius. Well, I'm not a genius. I'm kind of a genius. <laughs> you know, but I'm not. But you will never see, we, uh, because TV is splintered and the Internet, no one's going to have the kind of huge fame that people like that did then. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, so, uh, any other trivia questions you've got for me today, Larry? That's my exhausting trivia so far. Really? That's it? That was it. Oh, that's not going to take us the whole time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's... Uh... As I recall, the uh, MASH actually was a good show. Oh, MASH was a terrific show. And you know why he did well in the syndication and those things like Cosby didn't? It was because it was set in a time period, so you never had to worry about it aging or looking out of place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, okay. All righty. Um, so you, that's it for TV trivia, then. That's it for TV trivia. Uh, I was just astounded that I, I knew Mash had a huge audience. I didn't know it got 106 million. That's just... Well, I mean, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, uh, that it, it would have done that. But uh, 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 the... Um, Ending for uh, Who Killed Jr. I remember that was just like all oh, summer. Everybody's wondering who killed Jr. Who killed Jr. <laughs> I never saw the show. Who did kill Jr.? <laughs> I don't remember because I never watched the show. It was it was a woman. Okay. Okay. It was. Like, but he he. I don't think he was dead. It was who shot Jr. Not who. Who killed shot him. Jr. Yeah, I think he lived through it, mm-hmm. which is wonderful. I'm happy for. Him. Uh, <laughs> Larry Hagman. Larry Hagman uh, uh, played Jr. and uh, it was a uh, it was a sensation. Now, uh, wasn't that the same series that, like, a few years later, one of the characters wakes up and it turns out the previous season had all been a dream? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so wait a minute. You think that the Who shot Jr. They came back and it was all a dream the previous year. I think that's what happened. Yeah, I didn't uh, I'll have to look it up, but I think that's what it was about. This is amazing. And anytime, uh, anytime they do that, it's uh, bad. That's kind of like it, jumping it the shark. It must, must have been effective because you and I are sitting here how many years later talking about it? Yeah, my, 40 years later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I remember, I remember Bob Newhart had his second series, right? With Suzanne Which Plachette. Which I never saw. With Suzanne Plachette. And uh, on their last episode, they're lying in bed and he wakes up. And it's the other series he did before that series. Right. The, the, you know, the one where he was a psychiatrist. And he wakes up and he there's Suzanne Plachette in bed with him. That's it. There's Suzanne Plachette in bed with him because she was on the original series. And he says, wow, I just had the weirdest <laughs> dream. And they just played it like the whole second Bob Newhart series was a dream by the guy in the first Bob Newhart series. That was clever. And they did that as a kind of a parody of, of uh, what they did on uh, uh, on Dallas. Now, I never watched Dallas. Me either. It was like a nighttime soap opera, wasn't it? Yeah, you ready for my big admission that I'm, I've been making lately quite often, actually, is that I have never, ever watched a whole episode of Gunsmoke. And people go, what? You're, you know, of course, younger people don't even know what Gunsmoke was. But uh, 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 older people say to me, you never watched Gunsmoke? You never saw a single episode? No. I tried to watch an episode once, and I only got about a third of the way through it and said, this is boring. Well, that's, uh, yeah, it was the, uh, for a while, it was the longest-running show in history. It ran 20 years, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Started on radio. Now, here's a big trivia question for you. Who played Matt Dillon um, on, on, uh, on radio? 
I never heard it, but I think it was William Conrad. You're absolutely correct. Who wound up being Cannon, I think, on TV. <laughs> and he was the voice of the announcer on Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, he also became a, a, a television and movie director. Directed a few films and so on. Big fat guy. Yeah, I didn't we, know he directed. Okay. Well, I can't. I always wondered about Cannon, which I also hardly ever watched. Uh, how he could be a detective, because when you got to run after the bad guy, he certainly couldn't do it. You know, he was a little, was, a little. There pudgy. was a comic that had a bit about that. Cannon's in his Lincoln, and he he can't chase the. Hey, you punks, come over to my car. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's it's ridiculous, you know. Um, but uh, when you, when you were younger, did you have one go to show that you always watched when you were growing I, up? Let's see. I, I liked. I did like Leave It to Beaver when I was a kid. <laughs> really? Yeah, okay. it was kind of funny. I liked. Uh, uh, God, I liked the Dick Van Dyke show because I thought Mary Tyler Moore was hot. <laughs> yeah, she was too. Yeah, especially back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you you, you watched uh, what did you say before that? Uh, 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 you leave it to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver, and uh, I, I think even when I was about twelve years old, I would sneak. My parents would be asleep. I would sneak up and watch. Uh, I love Johnny Carson's monologue, so I'd watch The Tonight Show. Oh, okay. How how old were you when you liked the Johnny Carson monologues? I was like about uh, 11. Really? 12. So you yeah. think that is maybe where you got your love of doing stand-up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I liked his uh, I liked his monologues. Yeah. And I liked the way he made the... Uh, he actually got a bigger reaction when a joke didn't work. and. Well, they always built in a bomb just for that. Yeah. You know, and, and his reaction to the bomb was always funnier than a, a joke that would have worked. And you know. he always, at some point in his monologue, would say, well, last night's audience sucked. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's getting this tonight's audience on his side, but of course the next day he would say, last night's <laughs> audience sucked. <laughs> yeah, they built in and, the bombs in his act. And uh, who was your, uh, your go-to show? My go-to show. Well, you see, I mean, I'm 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 so old that my whole go-to shows started with radio. And initially, I always had to listen to Jack Benny. Love Jack Benny as a kid. Um, and um, I'm trying to think. There were some, you know, the Lone Ranger things like that. You know, radio radio had an easy accessibility. You could just lie there and you know, turn the dial. And, uh, uh, but I think that uh, probably Jack Benny was my my major. I think uh, 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 Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen, or Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Okay. Where I this came out in the Woody Allen movie, a line in a Woody Allen movie when they were listening to George Burns, uh, rather uh, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Um, he uh, he says. Uh, well, how do we know his lips aren't moving on radio? <laughs> and, and I always wondered the same thing. I mean, what? A ventriloquist and his dummy on radio. <laughs> you know, yeah, That's a good point. And, and did he leave the dummy home and just do the voice? Or did he actually <laughs> have the dummy there with him when he was doing the shows? I think the dummy was there with him yeah. when he was doing the shows. When, when that Picard him around the radio. <laughs> In fact, Candace Bergen, who was the daughter of Edgar Bergen, said that in her house there was a room for Charlie. Literally a room for Charlie. You go in there, Charlie would be sitting in a chair. Uh, wow, and and she always, I think, complained that it almost seemed like they treated him like he was her brother. You know, it's very strange. Ventriloquists are strange people. Yeah, there's always been those weird, bizarre ventriloquist movies. <laughs> well, I've always told you stories about me and Jeff Dunham. I mean, it just 
he was just, he was strange. He, he it's like the dummy was really his personality, you know, and his hand was just stuck in his personality. <laughs> uh, uh, and I always thought Dunham was terrible. I always thought he was horrible. You know, because really? I did, I did, I did live with people like Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, even Paul Winchell and Jerry Mahoney. Do you remember that? I do vaguely remember them. Yeah, Paul Wilson, uh, Paul Winchell, and, and Jerry Mahoney uh, were. Uh, I call them the television ventriloquist and dummy because everything they did was on television. Whereas Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, they did it in movies, they did it in radio. Uh, they didn't do it as much in TV, you know. Uh, but uh, I mean, it was it was really um, um, it, it, ventriloquists are just strange. Well, I, Paul Winchell was kind of a genius. Yeah, yeah. He developed the uh, oh, I, I forgot think, about the first. Paul, I forget he developed about, the first heart valve. Yeah, but uh, Paul Winchell. You mentioned Paul. I forgot Paul Winchell uh, and and his dog Farfel. Farfel. <laughs> You remember that? His main puppet was a dog, wasn't it? Farfel was the dog, and it was uh, they were selling Nestle's chocolate, I think. Yeah. And the N E S T L E S Nestle makes the very best, and then Farfel would go chocolate. <laughs> That's right. Paul yeah. Winchell. Yeah. And then he made a heart valve. Oh, it was Paul thing. Winchell and Jerry. Was it? Wait a minute. Was it Paul Winchell and Jerry Mahoney? Jerry Mahoney, I think he had a sidekick called Knucklehead Smith. Yeah, but wait a minute. Now, before I went with, uh, did I mention Paul Winchell earlier? I'm, see, I'm kind of yeah. out of it today with my pills and stuff. Oh, okay. You're on your, you're on your pills. Uh, Paul, yeah. I, so, uh, Paul Winchell, yeah, he did invent the heart valve. I remember that story. You know? Um, and Dunham, Dunham actually built his own helicopter, so maybe ventriloquists have some weird... <laughs> Weird ability to build, build things. Build things. <laughs> Jeez, almighty. God, I'm out of it today. I thought I mentioned. There was one other. There was there was Paul Winchell, Jerry Mahoney, and then there was this kid, a younger kid with a, a dummy, and I'm trying to remember his name now. But there were a handful of ventriloquists that were really pretty good. And when Dunham came along, I went, he can't light a candle to any of those guys. You know. I mean, Paul Winchell was definitely funny. And very good as a ventriloquist. So, whatever. Oh. Here we are talking about ventriloquists, just trying to waste time on this program. Ventriloquists from the fifties. <laughs> um, uh, any vaudeville act? You know, a lot of vaudeville acts made it to TV. Uh, I don't. Re I think I'm not. I'm too young to remember that. I think well, you, I was you always might, called, might what, Milton Berle. Was Milton Berle a vaudeville act? No, he was a comedian. But here's what happened. Uh, when they first did TV, they did things like Ed Sullivan and they did variety shows. And they needed, the. they went to the vaudeville acts to get people to do their acts on radio, on television. And it was a great thing for the vaudevillians. They made money off the television left and right. But the problem was that most of them only had like 15 minutes worth of material because they would go into a town and do vaudeville, and then they'd do their 15 minutes as part of the show. And then they go to another 20 years. They go to another town, and they do the same bite for 15 minutes for that town. They would go from town to town, town to town. Slow television, if you were. Uh, and so they worked for 20, 30 years doing the vaudeville circuit, you know, and if they were really good at what they did, they got a little more money and they were a little bit higher up on the bill and so on. But now here comes TV and they say, okay, we want this plate spinner to come on Ed Sullivan. And he goes on Ed Sullivan once and millions of people see his act and he can't do it again. Yeah, hey, he's, huh? <laughs> he, he's blown. It's like you with comedy material. If you do five minutes, on Letterman, you've blown that five minutes it's on gone. television. Yeah, that, it's gone. That was the thing they said about TV. It just eats the material. So what most comedians I've talked to do is they do the material they want to get rid of. You know, that's just, oh, they've done it long enough, they don't need to do it anymore, but it's good enough to do as a bite on television. Because 
why do do a bit on television you're then going people are going to be asked to pay for in a club but my argument back was people used to say to me well you know uh, people uh, I go on stage at one of your shows, Alex, and all they want me to do is something I've already done. And I go, yeah, because what they want is your greatest hits. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. In other words, they want to be able to say, Larry Bubbles Brown, hey, listen listen to what this joke, listen to this one. This is going to be a good, this is a good one. They don't mind if they hear it again. So I was kind of wrong on that theory about uh, 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 comedians. But vaudeville, they killed themselves one time on television. You know, some of them survived because they had more than fifteen minutes. Uh, Senor Wences was a good example. Remember Senor Wences, another ventriloquist, yeah. by the way. Probably the best. Live, probably the, lived to be a lived to be a hundred and three. Really, but mm-hmm. he was the best ventriloquist I think that ever lived. I just thought he was. If, if you don't know who he is, folks, go to YouTube, type in Senor Wences. In fact. Once you get past Senor, you'll probably see Wences in the column. W-E-N-C-E-S, I think. Mm -hmm. Just put that in. There are tons of clips of Senor Wences, and it's probably the funniest act (laughs) you'll ever see. And as a matter of fact, he was on the Ed Sullivan Show so often that the street next to the Ed Sullivan Theater, uh, where the entrance to the Letterman offices used to be, is Senor Wences Way. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they named it after him. So I mean That's he was a, he was he was a terrific ventriloquist. Where else but here could you hear us do uh, twenty <laughs> minutes on ventriloquists? Okay. Anyway. So the the Sullivan show literally was a vaudeville. Oh, no question about it. No question about it. It was just it was it was vaudeville. You know, yeah. here's this. Uh, I mean, the, the beauty of the Sullivan show was if you didn't like this act, five minutes later, there'd be another act. Mm-hmm. That was also the beauty of vaudeville. If you didn't like this act, five minutes later, ten minutes later, there'd be another act. And, you know, a vaudeville <laughs> show uh, might have something like ten different acts in it in a given week. But Sullivan was smart enough to pick up on Elvis and the Beatles, so he's pretty crafty that way. Oh, absolutely. The Elvis and the Beatles and... Uh, uh, I think he had the Rolling Stones, didn't he? He had the Rolling Stones. I mean, look, he even went as low as Herman's Hermits. Come on. <laughs> you know, like, uh, there's certain groups I never understood why they became a hit. Herman's Hermits was one of them. Never could figure it out. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, I think that's about it for us. I think we've uh, done all we can do here for a week without boring. We're, we're spent. <laughs> well, I mean, we did a whole, what, uh, uh, I would say 15 minutes on ventriloquist. And uh, five on trivia, so it was a good uh, good run. And we probably mentioned every ventriloquist that ever lived. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, it's so Jerry Mahoney. I'm just trying to think who that other guy was. There was one other guy. He was a young guy. Nelson. Jimmy Nelson? I think that, that I don't remember. I think that was his name, and he was a he was a ventriloquist too. And he had he why is it answer me this one, will you? And then we'll be I'll I'll let you go have some kind of a day here. Um why is it all the dummies looked Irish? <laughs> Did you ever notice that they all looked kind of alike? They all had that same yeah. face. They had that Charlie McCarthy. I know Charlie McCarthy was probably the first time it looked that way. Uh, okay. Yes. Oh, by the way, we didn't. Oh, make... they were, how about the, there was a. Bl- I, I've met this guy, uh, Willie uh, Ty- Willie Ty- Tyler and Lester. Lester, a black ventriloquist yeah. with a black dummy who looked yeah. I- who looked Irish. Um, <laughs> But wait a minute, we're leaving one out, and then we got to go. The dirty ventriloquist. You probably even worked with him. Oh, David Strassman. No, no. Uh, dirtier than that. <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name now. Oh, man. I mean, he almost couldn't get booked into clubs. I mean, his, his, his dummy was just rude as hell and abusive of the audience. Oh, uh, Otto and George. Otto and George, right. 
Everybody always said to me, you got to see Otto and George. you got to see Otto and George. I went, okay. Anyway, that's it. With Otto and George, we have made the, uh, the, the we, we've named all We're of complete, them. yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been talking with the wonderful Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yeah. Larry Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Brown, Larry Brown will be appearing at a comedy club near you, hopefully again very soon. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you? Boy, I don't know. I put these lights on every night, and they make me... They make me uh, I almost feel blind here. Let me see what I can do. I, th I think I can make them a little on, more on the yellow side, and that will make my uh, that will make me be yeah m not feel as uh, uh, blinded by them. I can turn them orange, see, and so I look a little more orangey. If I do this, see, I get rid of the orange. See that? Okay. But anyway, that's what I do. Okay. Let me see here. It's time to go to our um, our panel, our, our citizen panel. If you want to join it, uh, simply go over to gabnet.net over on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, there's a thing that says click here to join Zoom. You click on that, and it'll automatically uh, put you uh, uh, together with our panel, who is just formed like crust on a pudding. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where I came up with that. There's Jeff, and there's uh, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hi, guys. Haven't seen you in a while. You haven't seen me ever. Oh, really? You're another Matt. Uh, maybe. Yeah, we had another Matt. Oh, you're yeah, first time, first Matt. time Matt. Where are you calling from, Matt? San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas. Oh, yeah. uh, Charlie here is for, in Texas. Austin. He's in Austin. Yeah, but sorry, Charlie, but it sucks here. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm I'm actually moving next week to uh, Seattle. Oh, good for you! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything you can anything you can do to get out of there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get out of Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, your governor with his goddamn deal with, uh, uh, oh, yeah. you know, with uh, we. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're making passports ill uh, vaccine passports illegal. And you ha you can't avoid keep people from coming into your place if they haven't been vaccinated. Well, wait a minute. Whatever happened to the Republican feeling about uh, business being able to make its own rules? Okay, I mean that's it's really what, how do how do you live there, Charlie? You're you're not leaving. Matt's smart. He's leaving. <laughs> well, I never leave the house. <laughs> you just don't leave the house, right? Probably well, likes it. a little bit. Man, how that... did you find out about the show? Would be a question I would ask. Me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I started watching you guys uh, two or three years ago. I just okay. one day Googled. I wonder whatever happened to Alex Bennett. And, <laughs> and boom, like there you were. Yeah, and you found out I wasn't dead yet. That, <laughs> that, that's what you found out. Uh, I didn't want to say it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, a lot of times it happens. You know what I do is I always go to my echo and I ask them about people who I can't remember whether they're alive or dead. And I always think there should be a website to just, you know, live or dead. And then you put in a name and it says alive or dead. Yeah. yeah but I often wondered about that. What was the one the other day? And I, I, he's been dead for three or four years and I didn't realize that he was dead, you know. So. Uh, and you, you mentioned that you're, you're maybe going to quit. So I wanted to have at least one chance to yeah, talk yeah. the legendary Alex Bennett. Yeah, every every week I qu I'm threatening to quit, and I very seldom do, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we, uh, uh, eventually I will, one I, way or the I, other. Yeah, really? <laughs> one way or the other. You know. You're going to live a long time. Oh, uh, I don't know. The way I've been feeling lately, God. Uh, but I'm beginning, I, I went to get, uh, I figured it's my, maybe my eyes that's making me feel very tired and so on. Mm -hmm. So I made an appointment with my eye doctor who calls me. They send me these messages, you know, these robo messages. Oh, it's time for your, your uh, appointment. It's now more than time for your appointment. Gee, we haven't seen you in years. Get, make an appointment. 
So finally, we make an appointment. When's my appointment? A month and a half from now. I guess you really wanted my business, you know. So anyway, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm, so I'm a bit, but today I took a little walk again, and it was nice out there, and you know, it was uh, uh, it was okay, and uh, yeah, I'm yeah. playing with your yellow putty. I'll yeah, I got the putty. yellow putty. Yeah, that's for my that's for my. You know, it, it actually makes my hand feel better now. I've had it about a week. Really. Have you gone really? to the heavy? There are different strengths. I know. I, Phil, I got, Phil sent me this, and and I got all four strengths. Yeah, right? they're Just all the different yellow, strengths, right? Yellow's the the easiest, and right. I haven't got to the point where. Right, you get to play games with it. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, all right. You know and stuff. So. Oh, everybody, cool it. Here comes the here comes the broad. Robert? Robert and Tully? No. Oh. The broad. No. There she is. There she is. <laughs> She's a broad where a broad should be broad. She's better looking than Robert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Picking on him and he hasn't even showed up. R Robert? Yeah. Well, he was going to call the other night and then Tony was yeah, drunk on coffee. That's okay. Yeah. Tony's a nice guy. Yeah, but he was a little out of hand the other night. A little, yeah. 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 So what do you do for a living, Matt? I am uh, forced semi-retirement. For Wait a minute. You don't look old uh, enough to go into I, retirement. I got Well, I got laid off in December because of COVID. Okay. But, but I got a nice uh, a nice uh, severance package. Oh, so. re oh really? So I got, I got money to play. Yeah, but what was the uh, yeah. what kind of work did you do? Um, I was working for Chevron. Chevron. Okay. Yeah. So what okay. happened? People didn't need so, gas anymore? Yeah, what? we weren't driving anywhere. Right. Was that yeah, it? Yeah, as soon as really? COVID hit, the charge just went, you know. So really? they cut yeah. tons of jobs. Are they going to bring you back? So, uh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> they can't afford me. You know what it is? The problem <laughs> is these companies let people off because they couldn't, they didn't have enough business to go the, go the, the, the route with them. But then when it comes back and now there's a reason to rehire people, they're trying to see, they got used to getting along with nobody. And so they're yeah. trying to see if they can get along without having to hire extra people now and have everybody yeah. double over on their jobs like they were doing. Yep. So yeah. and, and you mentioned you you lived in Houston. I was in Houston for the past five or six years. Yeah. And I, I, I was really miserable there. But on that note with weather, I was just looking because I had thought about moving to Vegas. It's going to be 117 degrees there on Wednesday. You're moving <laughs> to Vegas, did you say? Uh, I, I had considered it. Oh, and, oh um, no. I decided on Seattle do would be better. But it's yeah. a dry yeah. heat. Nice. It's a dry I've heat. I've been yeah. in Arizona for a while. Pretty soon, Harley. Really <laughs> white dry. dry. Heat. A blowtorch <laughs> is a dry heat, too. <laughs> you, you know, it was lousy today. Today it was like sixty-six degrees, which is terrific, right? But humid. <laughs> what was that about? Yuck. I hate humidity. Yeah, I, uh, humidity sucks. It does. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so unless you need a shower, hmm? mm -hmm. uh, unless you need a shower, uh, or yeah. a cup of coffee. Exactly. You know, coffee without uh, water isn't very good. Oh, here comes Brian Neary. Oh, we're going to have a lot of people tonight. It's yeah. 70 here, and it's perfect. As a matter of fact, it started raining. So where, right. where, where are you moving to in, in California, uh, Matt? Did you say you're going to California? Uh, uh, no, Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, the weather there is, everybody says it's, you know, it's rain all the time, but it rains all the time here, so... Okay. Um, I'd rather have cool rain. Have you found an apartment? <laughs> uh, I got a house there. Got a house? What? Yeah. You bought... I had a house here in San Antonio. I've only lived here for three months, and I made like 30 grand in three months. That's how. Oh, really? So you bought? You actually bought a home where you are now? Bought a home here, hate it, moving again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's only step because on that... up there, we'll hire you. <laughs> Well, the inventory of houses here is so low that it's such demand is sold in like three days. Yeah. And, and, Same and they, thing they, in they, Austin. Yeah. 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 Everywhere around here, it's, it's crazy. Right. Is the show over? Do you have a job in Seattle? I do not yet. No, I'm 
I'm just uh, living it up to fate. How how is the uh, how how are the how, how's the difference in cost between where you are now and where you're going for property? Uh, you can get. I mean, it's. I mean, this house here. I'm in a brand new house. It's three bedroom, two bath. It's gigantic, and it's just me. So, it's a bit much. Um, so my other one is is a little bit smaller, and it's okay. You know, it's a little bit more here, but it's affordable. Yeah, yeah. So how old are you? I'm 55. 55. Okay. No, uh, he said. You know, people say that apologetically. Oh, I'm 55. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm 55. I, I it's hate still that. hard to get those numbers out. Yeah, try 91, 81, excuse me. Well, well, oh, my God. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm 25 every morning when I wake up. You're 25 yeah. every morning? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, um, I, I'd like to wake up one morning like I used to where I go, oh, ah, and greet the day. Instead, it's like, I got to get out of bed. Okay, here we go. All one right. foot's on the floor. But then again, nothing's changed, has it, Kathleen? I was always that way. Totally. I always hated getting out of bed. You know, um, uh, I hated uh, um, uh, having to um, greet the day, as it were. I like to lie in bed for maybe two hours before I even put one foot on the floor. Yep, when you were on Live 105, you were out the door at like what, like five? Oh, well, no, I, had a, a, I did a morning show. What stupid yeah. me, a morning show, right? And yeah. I'd sleep in. <laughs> my, my feeling always was that if you did great in a morning show, as a reward, they give you an afternoon show. But that isn't yeah. the way it works in radio. <laughs> so I was stuck doing a morning show for how many years was that? That was, God, it's got to be 11, 12 years. Yeah. Getting up every morning at... at and I'm, I'm, you know, there are people who are diurnal and there are people who are not. No, it was over 20 years, Alex, because when I worked at UPS in 80, I started in 86. Everybody would talk to me, but oh, you know, at 6 right. a.m. they knew not to talk to me because I was plugged into my Walkman on the quake. You're absolutely correct, because yes. I, I worked at uh, two other stations before I worked at Live 105, and so that would yes. give me about 20 years, yeah. But anyway, yeah. I get up every morning, and uh, I would wait to the last minute to wake up. You know, people go, oh, well, didn't you get there early to prepare the show? Fuck that. <laughs> you know, whether I get up early and, 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 and uh, pr prepare the show, or I get up later and don't prepare the show, I'm still going to make the same amount of money. So fuck it, you know. So I would just get up and drive to work, you know, and, yeah. and get there. I got there 10 minutes after the show started every morning because they would play music for a while. And the news and blah, blah, blah. They had blah. news and music and so on. And then I'd get in about, I'd, and I'd pull right in, right in the time, and i just open the mic and here we go. Another morning. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Do a couple lines and then do the show, right? <laughs> well, on. that was true, too. <laughs> well, then that, you had a little assistance there. Though. There was a period of time there where, as an incentive to be a high-powered morning guy, uh, I could get into gear really fast through my nose. You know, oh. so... Uh, that, that small, petite nose you have. That small, petite nose I have. <laughs> yeah, my Coke... My Coke uh, um, uh, costs were very high because of the size of my nose, you know. Okay, but um, bump. <laughs> but um, boom. But anyway, uh, th then uh, then I, I did. Oh, I quit it. By the way, when I moved to Florida, and then I came back, and I I didn't really such see. dark times in the Bay Area. It, it, what when I was in Florida? Fuck yeah, it was dark for me. I was pissed. Yeah, well, we didn't there even... were everybody was like, what the? But we didn't know each other then. No. No, we didn't know each other till I came back. Yeah, that was 10 years, 86, so yeah. 96. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, <clears throat> so anyway. How you doing, Jack? Well, he, he doesn't have his mic oh, on. Yeah. Why, why is he on so early? <laughs> got a whole show to do. I can't, we can't no, hear can you, hear Jack. You. We can't hear you. Oh, there, there you are a little bit, but not much. It's like a Lilliputian. Huh? 
No, we can't hear you. It's, we can just hey. barely hear you, just a taste. How's that? No. Oh. What did you do last night? How'd you fix it last night? Yeah, how'd you fix it last night? He had this problem last night on his show. Yeah. Well, I fixed it by uh, switching out microphones. Let me try this switch. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> It's, it's, it's Mine, Dad. <laughs> it's called fit. uncomfortable silence. Yeah. How, uh, <laughs> Dead air. Well, there is some Breaking kind of up. there is some kind of bad connection you've connection. got. Yeah, wiggle the wire. Wiggle the wire. Yeah. Recall. <laughs> Turn it off. Oh man, all bad. Hmm. <laughs> well, well, are we going to spend the next like, hour fixing his mic? Or? Like the AM radio when you're trying to tune it in. And the yeah. thing, Jack, I got all these people coming to your show and you can't hear you. Oh, you man. <laughs> There's something wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. <laughs> we have more technical issues on this show. We need oh, one God. kid on here to fix everybody's issues. One kid, it would be yeah, fine. like a thirteen-year-old could handle. Yeah, look at my son. No, well, why, why, why didn't you pull? Why didn't you enough. pull that mic out and plug in the other one? Just, you just just push the join button. That's what you do. <laughs> push the join button. Now he's We're now going. he's yelling at us. I can hear him a little bit. A little bit. Okay, okay. we well, hold up some sign. Why don't you unplug that mic and plug in the uh, other mic? Well, oh. <laughs> you know what it sounds what it sounds like to me what it sounds like to me is there is something with your connection that isn't quite uh, working that you haven't you haven't put, put it in properly or there's a wire loose in there or something as best as I can tell I can barely hear you it's like a whisper. You scream. sound like if I if I had a if I had a gnat, if I had the fly from the movie The Fly, buzzing around my head, going, "Help me, help me!" It would sound like that. Oh man. Oh, now we don't hear anything. Log off and come back on. Well, you know this is what we call a show here, Matt. Are you really enjoying it? We need, I am, lip, I am. We need a lip reader. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> mm. Zach, just raise your hand when you want to speak, and we'll all shut up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I know the drill. I watch you guys every night. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, not Matt. Oh, no, I mean, yeah. I mean Jack. 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 Oh, Jack. Jack. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about Matt. Because he's so old. Yeah. Well, anyway. We'll, Hi, Jack. We'll wait for Matt uh, for him to try and Log fix off, his mic. Log off, probably be okay. Log off and come back on. No, I don't think that's a problem. He had this problem last night with his yeah. show, and yeah. the audio on his show. And I wrote, I called him and I said, "You got problems." And he did something, and all of a sudden, his sound was beautiful. Hey. Yeah, you know. Uh, but uh, it was just like this little fly talking, and then everybody else, hello, you know. So. I and, know. and I did the same thing Matt did to find you. I googled is Alex Bennett dead? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Came right up. Great. Well, why don't we all, uh, all of you who have friends and they don't know where to find me, just say, "Google is Alex Bennett dead," and you'll find out where he is. Oh, so when you go to your next party, just start talking and say, "Hey, is that Alex Bennett dead? He must be dead." Uh, however, he's ninety-one. If, if he's ninety-one it, years old. If it, if it if it doesn't send you somewhere, however, you can pretty much Brian. assume I am dead. Error four hundred four. Everybody at the party check. Oh my what, God! What, he's what on were you here. saying, Matt? I said error four hundred four. Yes, error four hundred four. <laughs> Alex is no longer with us. You know. Oh man! What year did you start this uh, podcast, Alex? Oh, I don't know, 1875, I think it was. <laughs> the British were coming, and you were helping. Yeah, yeah I, I, no, no it, it was shortly after the Civil War. Come on. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, when did I start the? the first I, world I world. actually, I did my first podcast in uh, 1998. I was the first podcast ever. 
Yeah, remember? Right. Yeah. When did you start going on YouTube, I guess, was my question. YouTube, um, about, uh, I think about five years ago, six okay. years ago. Um, yeah. You know, I just got through making up some new promos for the next year uh, so that we can have a, a different uh, a, a promos now. have. Alex, uh, when you were doing Free Jack Radio, was that podcast or? Oh yeah, yeah, but that was it. That was the first one. That was in the other apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was the first With the one. With the green screen or blue? It was blue. Oh no, 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 no. You're you're talking about you're talking about. Um, uh, the thing I did with uh, Play Incorporated, where we did play TV. Yeah. yeah. We, yep. we, no, we didn't have a blue screen. Well, actually, we had a blue screen. Remember what, that, that, what that it was, thing it was that called, went around it, the camera? Yeah, it was called Hololight. And what yeah. it did is it projected on this um, uh, iridescent uh, screen uh, uh, the color that of the ring. So that when the camera, the lens was looking through the ring, it was also looking at this canvas, which was now glowing blue. And then we used yeah. that as the background. Yeah. 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 So that was I watched some of your older ones and it was real blurry and oh, yeah. terrible. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. It's really improved a lot. Oh, it, this is, you know, this is gorgeous by comparison now. You know, it's really something. Well, this is a lot better than Skype, huh? Yeah, huh? when you went to Zoom, that's why. Yeah. Zoom made it so much easier. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. And and if like we're coming up on the getting a thirteenth person here, if I had done this with Skype, we'd be frozen. Everybody would be frozen. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I think um, in the new Apple operating system, they're going to have something that's going to compete with Zoom, sort of a new. A new FaceTime thing. You want to know something? They already have it. Um, the, the fact is they, they all try to compete with Zoom and they can't because everybody's too used to Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and to suddenly yeah. say, well, come on back to Skype. We've, we've got the same thing. It, yeah, sure, they've got the same thing, but nobody gives a shit. You know? Well, te Teams is pretty big. Hmm? Teams is pretty big in uh, for work stuff. So we have like half meetings in each. Oh, really? My son used that share, for his school. What? Yeah, you can share, you can share documents a lot easier, and you yeah. can share back and forth a little bit easier. But what, yeah, what's that called? Teams. It's teams. And you, you've got you've got that, and you've got you've got do have Facebook with like groups now, and uh, Skype is capable of doing what a hundred people or something at a time. Wow. They say. They yeah, say. But with the way it worked for me, it didn't work that well. Let's say hello to Josh. He's been quiet tonight <coughs> because mm -hmm. he uh, he comes here to talk about serious stuff, right, Josh? Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love your attitude. Sure, what the fuck? I, yeah, yeah, maybe. I, maybe. I mean, I try. Matt? Let's talk about that piece of shit Bill Barr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a traitor and an asshole. <clears throat> well, here was a guy that when he was trying to get the job told everybody, oh, no, I'll be impartial. Yeah. And then he was yeah. anything but, you know. Yeah, well, Did you see that the clip they keep rewriting of him going, uh, well, uh, I don't know what you mean exactly by that question. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, are you being told <laughs> what to do? I think was yeah. the thing. You're being influenced by anybody yeah. in your decisions that you're going to make, that you're making. Well, what do you mean by that exactly? What do you mean by what do you mean by, by that exactly? You know, is, is anybody at your are you at anybody's beck and call? So, yes, it's ridiculous. You Just know. one guy. Um, do you think uh, you think Bill Barr is going to be? What are you, what are you doing there? She's Kathleen? spying on her neighbor, Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> I see. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, all right, Kathleen, what are you looking at? Come on, Kathleen. The ocean. Oh, really? It's a nice sunset right now. Really nice sunset. Yeah, it's it's raining here. Oh wow. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, anyway. Yay! That's because you're close to Seattle. Anyway, do you think there's any chance, Josh, that uh, they're going to do something with Bill Barr, like uh, bring him up on charges of anything? Because some of the I stuff. I don't think pretty... it'll come to that. No, they, they didn't do anything illegal. They just abused their power, you know? Yeah. 
Ray. I don't know. He lied to Congress. Yeah. Where's your picture? I, I'm having trouble on this laptop getting it to go to come up. Imagine well, that. Somebody having tech. You, you know what's interesting? We can spend the whole rest of the show. <laughs> there just we go. Oh, yeah. You look a lot better, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it didn't work? Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Wait, oh, there out. he is. Right. There's Ray. Congratulations. I, I just have to Ray. tell you, I had my colonoscopy today. Okay. Hey. Thank hey. you. Did no, you study? No, no anesthetic. I went, I went Ooh, on wow. commando, man. Ooh, raw dog. Come on. I'm Why the gipper. <laughs> Why aren't you at the gym? Why aren't you at the I'm gym on, on the bike. Stairmaster? I'm on my bike. I'm on my bike right now. <laughs> Why no anesthetic? Wait, wait a minute. Wait because a minute. I, wanted, I didn't want my whole freaking day ruined and tomorrow. What do you mean ruin? <laughs> I, I, it was easy. It was no problem. I didn't feel anything. You I mean, I felt like just some cramps. That's about it. Oh, great. I love yeah, cramps. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where can I get me some of those cramps? It was it was cool. I got to watch the whole thing. It, it was, I had five another one tomorrow. Yeah. I'm uh, going to do that every day. Yeah. We'll have a special channel for you tomorrow to put it on. Okay. Anyway, you, uh, let me get back to Josh a second. So you right. say that you don't think Barr is going to get uh, going to get uh, charged with anything because of this? What do you think so? I seriously doubt it. I mean, they'll make that some sort of a political fight, but I don't think there'll be a criminal setup to it. I mean, I, I think you know it probably has that potential that it happened, but I don't. But I don't think anything will but happen. But when you're going along with the president on some of these things he had them do, which were totally illegal, I think. I think you know. most of them, I would say, yeah. I mean, they would have no reason to, you know, access phone records or emails. So well, a a Apple went American along with citizens, it. citizens, let alone journalists. I mean, yeah. well, they, they got subpoenas, you know, you know? I yeah. mean... What are you going to do if you're Apple? They got a subpoena. Yeah, but they wouldn't give them yeah. certain things. Uh, no. uh, uh, you know, nope. but they still had access to those accounts. And that's that's scary, you know. Yep. I mean, we have to pass hey, man, I thought the problem was they didn't get a subpoena. That's what I thought, too. What, Apple they did? They did it without a subpoena. That's why everybody was right. so mad. That's right. Oh, Apple did it without a subpoena? Right. Oh, mm. fuck them, then. What's with all these these things they've been doing with, oh, we're, we're protecting you now. Yeah, we're, privacy, a privacy. Privacy, yeah. I don't yeah. think Apple gave them the information, though, did they? They didn't give them certain stuff. Yeah. But right. they gave them other stuff. And the fact that they gave them anything without a fight is kind of scary. Yeah. You know? Google, Google turned them down. They didn't get anything from Google. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. Apple is a lot more uptight about giving stuff out than Google is. Well, apparently think, not. I don't think Apple gave them anything. I don't think so either. Well, did, but the, the, weren't they supposed to turn stuff over and they said they did in some way cooperate with them? No. They, no, they even, with that, they even with that, them. when they were investigating that shooter down south, they wouldn't give them anything. I know Santa that. Barbara. I know that. But this was uh, this was them wanting stuff to find out about. What? They told who they called. They wouldn't give them any content of the calls, but they said they yeah. made calls to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, so they knew who the congressman called and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's like no big deal. Yeah. I don't know. Who did we just lose? Oh, we lost Jack. Jack. Oh, no, no, no Jack. Jack's there. No, Jack's there. So, so if if they do something about Barr, he would become disbarred. No, I see. Well, he ought to be disbarred anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, we lost. Uh, we lost uh, Brian. <laughs> we lost Brian. Oh. Uh, oh, he'll be. He'll come back. I'm sure. Uh, some. Have you got that mic in yet, Jack? No. No. Okay. Well. I, I wrote to all these people and said, come to the uh, Jack Bishop show, the intersection after Alex's show. <clears throat> yep. Yep. You say you said it right there. What did he say? Did you, did you hear me now? We can just hear a little like, <laughs> like, you know. <clears throat> it sounds way like. Way far away. It, yeah. It sounds, Very tinny. There is something. Corey there's there, Edison. There is something wrong with your microphone. Sounds like something's not plugged in you know, all the way. Let me ask That's you. That's what it sounds like. Do, do yeah. you have a Do you have a, uh, a, a microphone that needs a battery? 
No? Oh, okay. It says Radio Shack on the outside of the mic. Oh, er, he just wrote me. <laughs> Let me see here. He said, uh, as tech guys say, it's good leaving here. Tested it two hours ago. I hear myself and everybody else. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Then the next one says, I can't get any audio out of the board. Ordered a new board yesterday. Damn. Yeah, I don't know why you can't get any audio. Because obviously you got audio out of the board because you could hear, we could hear all your callers last night. Nope. So, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe there's a broken wire. It could be a broken yeah. wire. It could be... Amplifier dying. Well, go into... Um, oh, boy. I, I hate to fix these things while we're on the air, but... Uh, you might try. You might. You might try going into your. Since you're on Zoom, you go up to that little green shield they have, and you click on that, and you'll get a, a gear shift. And you click on the gear shift, and you'll get your settings. And um, you might see that your input is the setting that you should be using for the audio. I, I wish I could show you, but I can't show you. Well, yeah, you you were right. You click on the little the little thing in the top left corner, and then you go over to the gear, and you're right. You, you, you left click on the gear, mm -hmm. and it brings up your settings panel. And then you go down to audio, and you can adjust your speaker and your mic volume, and what mic you're using. Do you Let's see that? Do you see? Access. Do you see? Do you Take see? Do you see, do you see that all, Jack? You don't see it. It's on everybody's Zoom. Yeah. yeah, it's up at the top left. Yeah. Well, also, if you go to, um, uh, if you go over to, I think over where it says it on the bottom mute, I think you can get the settings through there, can't you? I can't. When was the last time you updated Zoom? Well, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> All right. I got, I got a show to do here. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, Let us know when you get it fixed, Jack. Yeah. I want to take up sign language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see here. So, uh, so we, lost, we lost Brian. I don't know why. Uh, uh. But uh, anyway, um, how do you think the president's doing over in Europe? Do you think he's doing a nice job of trying to mend fences? Hey, you guys got me now? Yes. There you right. go. There. What did you do? Well, apparently, uh, I had some sort of update on Zoom this oh, afternoon. Yeah. Go figure. Oh, now, I, I, I knew it. And so it didn't use the right input for your audio. That's right. So yeah. I was right. That's now you're overmodulating. Well, now, well now we'll worry about that later. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. Who cares? Yeah. But this may, might not affect you when you're doing your show because yeah. it's a whole different situation. You're not using Zoom. Um, hey, but I just stopped in here to see what condition my condition was in. <laughs> <laughs> and to invite the charming, the lovely Smooty to come join us on the intersection because uh, she's the most consistent woman that's calling in. And I run this stag party every night. <laughs> And it's all, it's got to be. Well, to begin with, you would have to pronounce Schmooty correctly. Schmooty? You already <laughs> lost her at Smooty. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> Kathleen well, it, got a message today from me. You, well, bless yeah. you, my son, my son, my son. Yes. But, uh, you know, we have all these guys that show up for the intersection, and it's gotten to be as bad as your program as far as talking about people's prostates. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as a matter of how fact, many here uh, still have a prostate? Will you <laughs> hold, hold your hand? Up. I still have mine. I still have mine. <laughs> and anyway, you know, I do some trivia stuff on the show, and I started for, started to think about next week on my show. I'd give away prostate exams if you oh, answer oh, the trivia Oh, speaking of that, questions. by the way, I got to tell you something. This is great. John Larkin's going to be there. This is great. I love I I. I have a urologist who I really kind of like a lot, uh, and I also have a 
oncologist <clears throat> that did the, you know, the radiation and all of that. Well, I tried to get an answer out of the radiation doctor about when do I get my next, next exam, and they were kind of like, it was almost, it took me a month to get through <clears throat> it. Finally, I wrote my urologist, and I said, can you do this for me? And he said, uh, Mount Sinai, get this, gets 10 to 30K for the radiation treatment. So they don't really give a shit about <laughs> anything else. This is from Bless my you. doctor. This is Thank from you. my doctor. They don't give a shit about anything else. Um, uh, that may be rather crude, but it's a fact. After they treat patients, they don't even have the decency to send a one-page summary of what they did to referring doctors. It's ridiculous. And uh, he, he goes on to say, hey, you know, I'll be happy to take care of you. But he said, there's no need for you to go back to see them ever. Wow. Okay? Uh, and, but isn't that scary that a hospital, you would think a hospital more than anybody would be go out of their way to want to, you know, uh, uh, check you out and make sure you're okay and do the upkeep on you and so on. And, and they don't give a shit, you know? So, I mean, it's really, it's interesting. It's very, fa it's fascinating. That's why you should always go to a proctologist instead. Huh? They have nowhere to go. You should always go to a proctologist instead because they have nowhere to go but up. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, Matt. Um, well, I have elderly parents, and they've been in and out of the hospital for the last couple of years. And I can attest to that none of the doctors, none of them give a shit. They never follow up on anything. I mean, they have like a dozen doctors, and it's like pulling teeth to get them to the do it. The doctors at a hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, pr the private doctors are always there for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's still, you have to instigate everything. They just don't follow up at all. Well, you, you know, it's so, kind of like no news is good news. Yeah, for years, I have hated urologists. I've never found a urologist I liked. And I asked my, my internist once, I said, why is it all urologists are so kind of like, eh, I don't like them. He said, they're the weirdest branch of medicine going. He said, they, they're just a certain way. And I'm sure anybody here has had to deal with urologists have found most to be true as well. I found this guy, and he's a saint. I mean, he's wonderful. But, I mean, uh, it's a weird profession. I imagine if all day long you're looking at people's dicks and sticking your finger up their ass, it doesn't give you a good attitude, you know? They're all pervs. They're huh? All pervs. They're all pervs. I, I think they enjoy being sadists. Have you ever had a cystoscopy? Yeah, yeah. When they stick the What's lighted that? tube in, yeah. in your in your urethra, that that was fun. I had that once. Oh wait a minute! Did all Jack want to do was come on and plug his show and leave? <laughs> this was, he, said he, was, he said he was testing his equipment. That's he was he testing said. his equipment. Oh, test your equipment on my show anytime. You know. Uh, I won't be on tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> plus, plus, who's... I got my brother and my sister-in-law coming in tomorrow. Come on. Who, who are these smoody people, the smoody woman you're talking smoody. about? Smoody. Uh, oh, I want to go back to that. I want to go back to that pee hole topic. Yeah. <laughs> go right ahead. Do, do they put you out for that? No, no. They, oh. they, they, they stick a Q-tip <laughs> swab with a little Novocaine in the tip. Oh. And then, and then, it's to look inside your bladder. Oh, oh, you're talking about a a cystoscopy. That's what I, I had two of those. Those are really pleasant. They're fun. Yeah, that's I, what I, 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 I had that one not. time. Never there are again. people who do that on purpose for fun. Oh God! Yeah. All right. Well, here is my <laughs> here. <laughs> now, listen to my theory. My theory and Josh. I, Wait a minute. You know, we'll see you Monday, right? We listen to my <laughs> listen to my <laughs> listen to my <laughs> theory, and Josh, see if you don't agree with me that it's all legal. Okay, we always talked about Guantanamo and how they were torturing people there by waterboarding, and I figured instead we should give them cystoscopies <laughs> and colonoscopies <laughs> without the benefit of uh, anesthetic. I have them train on them. Do the, the young kids yeah, no, but it's you, but you're doing <laughs> right? you're, you're doing it to keep them in good health, okay? <clears throat> so, in answer to your question, Matt, it's very uncomfortable. The the little bit of Novocaine they put on the in the urethra is not enough. 
Oh, they didn't do a Novocaine with me. They did some kind of other stuff they put in there to deaden it. And then they yeah. took hey, the- Hey, you guys, hold on. Hey, Sean, come here. Can you drink a six pack of beer before? <laughs> I have to say- This I is what you get to look to forward to. Oh my God. <laughs> doing the same type of procedure to women though. Laugh all you want, Kathy. And you, have you seen the Sisto, the Sisto device? It looked, what they did is I went into the room and they had it on a gurney and then they yep. had it covered with a tarp so yep. I wouldn't see it. But you could see the size of this thing. And oh, yeah. I, I thought they were gonna put a fucking boa constrictor up my dick. <laughs> and and, and Alex, tell, tell them your joke. Come on, tell them your joke about the two cameras. Oh, well, what I wanted to do was get a cystoscopy, which goes in your penis, a, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, colonoscopy. A colonoscopy, which goes up your butt, and then a the thing that goes down your throat, which is an endoscopy. endoscopy. Okay. All the yes. And then I wanted to have, I wanted to go have all of it done in one day at one time, and then have the doctor see if one that they were all in watching and looking around and they could see each other. <laughs> Maybe what you ought to There's do is instead of the colonoscopy, have the doctor okay. stick his hand up there and see if he can see him. Boy, this is a real audience getter. We're down to 33 people. That's triple oh. penetration. Yeah. Talking about you had triple penetration. What did you say? What? Penetration. Triple penetration. Yes. I've, yes. I've seen that. I'll bet you have. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Probably at an orgy, huh? Yeah. My son okay, showed oh, up Alex at the door. The yeah. door what, what do you yeah, say? I got a, one last question on this topic. Yes. How long are they up there? <laughs> it's, it's I seen, it seemed here. like about three yeah. hours. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's uh, less than it five longer minutes. Than a couple less than five minutes. minutes. Okay. It, okay. It's it's totally uncomfortable while the scope is passing into the bladder. Once it gets in the bladder. It's not uncomfortable. Well, I told my to doctor, I said, unless you're finding some kind of rich ore in there, <laughs> uh, get out. Oh, you better be finding oh. gold or silver up there. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, anybody that's had it will attest to you, it's no fun. No, it's no oh. fun. No. I have a metal detector. Good. Good, yeah, that's great. Then what does that got to do with cystoscopies? I don't know. It's not a metal scope. It's a, like well, there's a light aura. Listen, I'm sure if this were a show with nothing but women, they could talk about some procedure they had, which wasn't wasn't fun. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, how often do they go in and get their you know hoo haws looked at and pried apart and doing. <laughs> Doing sonar echoing and stuff like that in there to see if there's anything. So, yeah, whatever. I understand childbirth is not a bed of roses. <laughs> nope. Well, uh, I've never gone through childbirth, so I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, Ray, tell us about how that felt. Childbirth is actually, um, well, it's okay because uh, it's I'm her. The first man it's not me. Well, the thing is, I'll tell you the reason why it's it's easier is that it certainly has got to be something to go through. But once it's finished, you've got something really wonderful. You know? Sometimes. It, once that head comes out, it's whoo! <laughs> downhill from there. <laughs> Unless they become an axe murderer or, or something. Yeah. I mean, at 747, the hospital said I gave birth to a 747, nine pounds, 13 Ooh. ounces. Nine God. pounds? That's a lot. Now he's 6'2", 250. Wow. Really? So he's taller than... Dad is 5'6". Wow. He's taller than you? Oh, yeah. My yeah. dad was 6'5". I'm 6'2". Because foot. she's tall. I know, because she was always, you know, we looked eye to eye at each other. Really. Yeah. You know. I mean, my inseam is 36. Don't you don't you hate when the, when the baby comes out and the doctor slaps the kid and they go, this is not a pretty kid, so the nurses line up to take their slap? Your inseam is 36. That's awesome. That should have been like a pole vaulter or something. 36. I mean, that's really long legs. <laughs> 
Long, I ran long distance and played basketball, volleyball, okay. all that good uh, stuff. Okay, good. Okay, wow. 36. Yeah. All tall blondes. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. 60 tall and my inseam is 31. So. Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, that's because you guys both have something in there that she doesn't have. In the... <laughs> Never mind. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> like, hold on a second. Let's, let's get to something. Semi well, that's what I meant. My third leg is 31. My other legs are 36. Oh, okay, I just had to... <laughs> What the dead straight face. <laughs> Good grief. Carry, carry. I give up. <coughs> uh, yes, Jeff. You like Harry Carry. Y yes, Jeff. We've gone so downhill. Yes, Jeff. The mic is I'm on sorry. you. Gotta unmute, my Jeff. No, Jeff. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Let's there you go. For a second. Oh, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Time's up. Time's <laughs> <laughs> over. Ding, ding, ding. Gong show. Well, well, thankful. What are you drinking, Tony? What are you uh, drinking? Coffee. Tony, what are you drinking? Oh, you're talking to me? Yeah. 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 Let's make sure you're not drinking coffee. Uh, what, what are you drinking, Tony? I think it's coffee. Oh, oh geez. Get, make sure you get on Jack's show he all wired up. He thinks it's coffee. Yeah, call <laughs> Jack's show tonight. I was just thinking, Ray Renati, he saved the insurance company a thousand dollars for no anesthesia. I know. I realized that today. Yeah. Oh well. They why why did you take me, the right? anesthesia? It's because great. I didn't want because it's like it takes like two hours less. And I don't have to come home and sleep, and I can drive. What do you mean it takes two? It doesn't take two hours less. Okay, I watch the people coming in. They got to get the medicine, and then I was in there. They got to get what? I was done. Okay, I was when I came out. There are people. They're wheeling them in. They're <clears> out, <throat> right? I'm done and out of there. There's still people asleep that came in. So so. I, but, but when you when you come out of that, hurt. when I, 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 they gave me that stuff. It's the same stuff that Michael Jackson took. Probably. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's yeah, probably. that's what I had. It just yeah. depends what the doctor does. They just give you a lot less. Yeah. A lot less. But anyway, let me finish what I was going to say. And uh, I, the first time I did it, they put it in me and put me to sleep. I, the next thing I woke up, I heard the doctor looked at me and said, well, we're, we're through. And I thought I hadn't even gone to sleep yet. And yeah. then uh, he said, lie there until you feel you want to go to the next room and change your clothes. And within two minutes, I had my feet on the ground and was walking to the other room. So you really didn't need to do that, Ray. You could have no, gone. No, no, no. But and like, the see, last time I out. had it, I was out. for. I, I came home and I slept for four hours and it sucked. And the other reason I didn't do it is like I just spent three years getting off of a benzodiazepine because hell, and I didn't want to take another one right now. Mm -hmm. No, that That's isn't what I, it is, though. It's propofol. No, no, they were going to give me one. They don't do that. At my hospital, they don't give me what... They do it a different medicine. They give you, like, a benzo and something else. Oh, really? And, fent yeah. and fentanyl, Ray. Yeah, well, it's different at every... There's so many different ways they can do it. Um, the idea they, is were, to... they were going to give me a benzo. All this, all this talk is really engaging Kevin and, uh, what, and, and Josh to join us what, in the uh, discussion. What benzo? Versat? Hey, enough of that. Of, enough of it. Of enough! Really enough! Broad. Stop! I'm going to have medical nightmares he tonight. Yeah, stop. You guys. Just stop. <laughs> you know, God man. damn, Trump's looking good lately, isn't he? Well, the only thing is, at least with Trump, we had some excitement. You know, yes. with Trump, we had something we could yell and scream about. After Trump but disappeared, can I talk here, right. please, Alan? What? Can I be allowed to talk, please? Oh, sorry. You act like it's your show. Yeah. Excuse me. I make I make false assumptions. Anyway, um, now where was I? Oh yeah. No, the trouble the trouble with Biden is that Biden is is kind of dull. You know, there's no excitement there. Now, I, quite frankly, after four years of Trump, it's nice to have no excitement. But when it comes to doing a show like this, we got nothing to talk about. Well, what did you think about uh, our president in uh, in England today? Well, he was really Ooh. nice, and he treated everybody decently. Uh, can we get excited about this? Can we yell about this? Can we scream about this? I mean, what do you, what do you think, uh, 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 Josh? It, it, he's he's really doing a pretty good job, isn't he? I mean, 
in just keeping everything calm, but it's not exciting. There's a lot of people who are alive that would have been dead. Oh, yeah. no question about it. Okay, so come on. No, I'm a listen. Give the guy a break. I, a dull I'm and alive. I listen. I, I, you know, I don't hold that against him. I'm just saying that when you're trying to do a show and does discuss stuff, this there is there's not enough stuff to really get your teeth into. I know. There's not enough meat. <clears throat> not enough He's meat. He's a disaster for comedians. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, be careful what you wish for, because I hate Trump more than probably any of you. <laughs> and he put out a letter today or yesterday where he said, "Tell, send Putin my my warm wishes." Oh, you know he's just a piece of shit. He is. There's a there's nothing. You can't go any lower than Trump. He is just a psychotic, fucking. Well, when you hear that what the government was doing was, you know, wiretapping people and doing all kinds of, just nefarious stuff. Yeah. to like members of Congress, for crying out loud. You, you go, this is not the America I signed up for, and this is horrible, and this guy should be like, he should be thrown Listen. in jail. He should be thrown in jail. Yeah. Do you think, Josh, you think we'll get him in jail? you think we'll get Trump in jail? No. No? I, do. I don't I think do. you'll get anywhere near that. Yeah. Really? I do. I think you can place bets in um, England on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I tend to go along with Josh. I think he's just going to keep squeezing out of it and wiggling out of it. And I think he's going to be dead before we can do anything about it, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, he does not look healthy. Do you see the picture of him at that speech they gave the other night and the fact yeah. that his the people were, could swear he was wearing his pants backwards? <laughs> no, he's just fat. I know, but 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 no, but it looked like it literally. If you look at the picture, it looks like he did have his pants on backwards. That's good. Wasn't even staying. making sense. He was babbling. He was incoherent. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, in the he, came in he the was room. that way for four years. Yeah. 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 Does anybody? Does anybody know what if? What if he has an indictment but not a conviction? Can he still run for president? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, That's shit. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Let's go to the guy who usually knows this kind of stuff. Josh, if he gets indicted, yeah, okay. he can still run? Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I mean, there's only a couple qualifications that are constitutionally listed to uh, permit you to run for president, but, you know, nothing really to not permit you to run for president. So there's no disqualifications other than, you know, have to be a natural born citizen. Yeah. I mean, so those type of things are specifically spelled out. So, you know, anything else is pretty much fair. So in other words, you can, he can be under indictment or anybody could be under indictment and still run for public office. Yeah. I, and if I they win, they get to hold in, that public office. I, believe, uh, I thought we've had uh, people in federal penitentiaries on the okay. ballot for president in certain states in the past before, haven't we? I'm almost positive we have. Yes, I'm there's sure. There's a guy in California who used to run all the time. Yeah. He was in jail. What the hell was his name? Uh, he's crazy. Richard Nixon? No, no. no. I mean, the, years ago. I can't remember. I forget his name. You know, the, the laws are very odd because states can have certain, you know, qualifications for voting and for things like that. I mean, it's constitutionally possible, I think, if you think about it, to be a convicted felon and be allowed to run for president but mm -hmm. not allowed to vote for yourself because the state that you live in you can't yeah. vote with a felony conviction i mean you know yeah that, it's that's very odd but it's i unless i'm misthinking here right now that, that's that's wasn't possible. there wasn't there a law for a while where if you were found guilty of uh, of a felony that you did you lost the right to vote well yeah i think a lot of yeah. states still have yeah. that i'm pretty yeah. sure yeah I don't think you know. I don't think all fifty states do or anything, here, but I think here, here, there's a yeah. fair number yeah. of states that you can't vote with a felony conviction. But that does not, you know, disbar you from running for president. Running. They, by if the you way, can meet yeah. the eligibility for signatures and those kinds of things in your state to get on the ballot. By the way, this, this is this is for Jack, who I'm sure is listening right now. Do you know that Jack Benny and George Burns were both found guilty of a felony and given a year and a day? No. For smuggling jewelry into the United States from Europe. No. Yes. Really? 
Uh, wow. it, it wound up being a, 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 a Burns pleaded guilty, nolo contendere, took the year and a day. They didn't have to serve any time, but they were definitely considered to be felons. Oh. And then Benny held back and refused to for, the, for quite a while. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden decided, oh well, what the hell? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give in. And he pleaded nola contendere, and he got a year and a day. Uh, but it was for it was uh, there was this guy who was a diplomat, and they were always uh, George Burns was always looking for a deal, and Benny was always willing to go along with it. And they were in Europe, and uh, he said to ben, uh, he said to Benny, he said, I got a friend. He's a diplomat. He gets to take anything he wants to back in a diplomatic pouch and not have to tell people he has it, okay? So we just buy the jewelry, we give it to him, he takes it to the United States, we don't pay any, uh, any tariffs on it. Well, the guy gets caught with the jewels in his dip diplomatic pouch and immediately goes, oh, I was bringing these in for Jack Benny and George Burns. <laughs> and so they immediately arrested George Burns and Jack Benny. Ooh. And they actually went to trial on this whole deal. Most people don't know this story, but it's absolutely... No. Did I they swear, serve time? Uh, no, they, no, I said they didn't serve any time, but they, they, uh, they got a year and a day so that they were then considered felons. felons. And I'm just wondering if they ever had the right to vote after that. Hmm. But I figure that like makes... Like I said, it depends on the state. Yeah, yeah, make some it, stage you can. Wouldn't that make a great movie, that story? <laughs> I mean... Mm -hmm. But uh, so uh, you may not know it, uh, uh, Jack, but Jack Benny was a felon. And he can did you commit a crime. can you vote in New York if you're a convicted felon, Alex? I believe you can. Uh, my uh, California, uh, you cannot. A, f uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, was found guilty in New York of a crime, and uh, he votes to this day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I would imagine in certain states, uh, Florida, didn't they have to do a thing in Florida to allow felons to vote after they'd served yeah. the time? Yeah. They had a, a vote, a constitutional amendment vote. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They're trying to do it here, too, to yeah. overturn it. Well, all I know is that, uh, uh, by the way, that law they passed in Texas, they also passed in Florida. The Gun same, law? No. The law about... Uh, 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 you can't keep people from coming into your business if they aren't if by saying if you aren't vaccinated you can't come in yeah. you can't use that and you can't the other thing is the the big deal about uh, no they made literally the vaccination passports illegal in their states yeah. which is so we stupid have, we don't have them in California you, won't do yeah them. but but yeah but you could consider that little card you've got. Right, a passport. But, so. but once Kate, once Caitlin gets that uh, governorship, things are going to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. Things are going to change. Yes, right. Hey, listen, Matt. It's terrific. You should call a few more times before you leave town. You, I will check in with you guys. Yeah, it's been fun. Check in with us and keep checking in with us. You're terrific. You're really I will. terrific. You're a good addition. Jeff, thank you so much. Wordy as welcome. usual. I can't shut you up. Uh, 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 Alan, thank you for being here this evening. Charlie Wallace, Josh, always love seeing you. Uh, of course, the lovely and attractive John Larkin, the uh, amazingly lovely and attractive Kathleen Halstead, better known as Schmoody, uh, and and uh, of course uh, our old friend uh, Tony. Thank you, Tony, for being here tonight and not saying Very a word quiet. because you've had coffee. Uh, and uh, Kevin, always good to see you. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Brian, great to see you. And then, of course, there's Ray Renati, who looks frozen right now, or that's a photo. I'm oh, here. Oh, oh you're there. Frozen. Oh, that is you. Okay, you scared me now. He's in anyway, the dark. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. The Citizen Panel. That's them. Oh, wrong button I pushed. <laughs> I almost did everything perfectly tonight. Anyway, a good night to our citizen panel. Uh, Jack Bishop will be here next. 
uh, Jack, who was also on our show tonight, testing his equipment. Uh, anyway, he'll be here next with the intersection, taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. GabNet Live. I'll be here again on Monday at four, doing our little uh, Monday uh, get together that we like to do. And then on, uh, we'll do the regular show come uh, come Tuesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, tell her I love her. Okay. And by the way. Get a vaccination. And if not, wear a mask. Stay safe out there. And help keep us safe. Bye.